And the best part is, it really happened. It was just like any other night in Bethlehem. Or so we thought. <laughs> For on that starry night, a miracle occurred, coming down from heaven in the form of a baby. We were surprised that something so important could happen in our sleepy little town. But the prophet Martha foretold it in the scriptures when he said straight out of tiny little Bethlehem would come the one who'd be ruler over Israel. Go, Granddad. We're gonna go out to the boat and do what they know. They need a stable diet. 
feed my doll too. You have a doll? I can introduce her to my doll. Her name is Esmeralda, and they can be friends. Sorry, kid. I was just joking. You know, Blake, serving at the end is one of the ways we orphans of Bethlehem can really make a difference. Agnes is right. I'm thankful for a safe place to stay and the people that love me. Why don't you go to the stable and check out Gertie's animals? She'll tell you all about them. Whatever. are meeting some interesting characters here at the end, aren't we? Uh, they've all got their, they're all a little bit different. They've all got their own little backstory, kind of like me and you, right? All a little bit different, all got a different story. Some of us are a lot different from the way I can see. They're a lot different than the others. Uh, God's Word says that it's good and pleasant when God's people dwell together in unity. And Christmas and the season, with all its parties, its plays, its family gatherings, well, that's a time that can bring people together. Now, it's not always unity, but we're together nonetheless, right? Well, my prayer for you this Christmas is that you will have the opportunity to gather together and that that togetherness will foster unity because no matter how different we are or how big our differences are, God can use it to make something beautiful. We saw that quilt earlier, and who knows? God may even be able to use something as unusual as barnyard animal noises to make beautiful music. Let's show them what you've got. 
<laughs> I told you. I told you. I tried to tell you. Gertie was right, wasn't she? Wasn't she? They made some amazing. They were very talented animals, that's for sure. But you know who else was right? Star. She told us at the very beginning that today was going to be a very special day. Something very special. Something unbelievable. Extraordinary. Some might even say impossible was about to happen. Now, some might just say it was just enthusiastic optimism that she has. Uh, maybe it was too much coffee. I don't think there is such a thing. Can I get an amen? There we go. Yeah. Or you might just call it spiritual insight. We're using quotes all night. Spiritual insight, right? Yes. So, let's go back. Let's go back 2,000 years to that small town of Bethlehem. Usually a pretty small, quiet suburb of the big capital of Jerusalem. But tonight, tonight it's buzzing with people. You see, there's a census, and there's lots of folks from out of town. They've come to their ancestors' town to register for that census, so it's unusually busy. And although we have already met some lots and lots of interesting people and animals, we're about to meet a few more. Some who are, well, let's say, out of this world. They sent me to help at the check-in desk. I just couldn't listen to one more minute of animal singing. Ooh, did Gary show you her animal choir? She loves them. To, if I'm being honest, to me it just sounds like, well, animals. But I respect her dedication. <laughs> Looks like we only have germs left. The numbers are up 33% from last year. This census sure has helped our business, and the day has been flying by. Good. Here comes our next customer. I'll show you the ropes, Billy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Apostle Alan and David, and we have come from Nazareth Church to the census. We need a place to stay. Mary is about to have a very special baby. Babies are always special. I knew today was going to be extraordinary. I just knew it. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. You want to hear the story? I'm ready. Lay it on me. <laughs> Those animals don't 
blessing. And even though you think you have a family, you're still an orphan. Agree to disagree. Just saying, as soon as I earn some more money, I'll be getting straight out of Bethlehem.
should have had a little hope of saying.
us. He doesn't have time for people like us. And we all have times we feel sad. But we have felt the love of God through our family here at the end, and now it's going to be a The Bible says God has heard the cries of his people, and he will send the Messiah. We just witnessed the birth. God has just shown that he hasn't forgotten about us. We may be orphans, but we're, not a, but we're a part of a family, God's family. And when you think about it, we're all really orphans grafted into the family of God. None of us has to be alone in this life because God has adopted us into his family and we are his. Love has come as a baby. God, God has sent us a 